Hello and welcome to the video with me, Winner and Shade, with another video of Weekly Andrew, in which, uh, yeah, this video is definitely going to be longer than what they normally are, especially over the last few months, considering this is the end, the beginning of the end of this anime season, which means I got a ton of anime attacks to talk about for once. So, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get straight into that. Right now, starting off with Executioner in our way of life. In which, yeah, I kind of enjoyed it quite a bit. But there's also all those people that kind of got really mad at it on the first episode. Because the throwaway character that's basically just the... Generic isekai main character getting killed off immediately. Well, at least they should be happy considering he's been brought back as part of Manon. Eh, guess that's something for them. But then again, all those people quit watching the first episode, so... <laughs> yeah. Over when it comes to villains in this, I'm kind of taking a guess currently that Flair is the main villain of the story here, I think. And also, one thing about the end of this here that I kind of didn't really like that much was just the fact that absolutely nothing came up for about when it comes to Akari and everything she was doing towards the end. Minnow and Momo weren't questioning things at all, basically. Seriously, they need to ask more questions about Takari. But they're not. Watch out. Overall, pretty good anime, I think. So, yeah. Move on to Raren. Haren-san. In which, this anime has kind of tricked me a few times, I guess. First with Rin who is Reina's little brother, which I was thinking was going to be her little sister, but nope, little brother, apparently. And then there was Eru, which is Reina's little sister, despite the fact that I was thinking she was going to be her mother, or at the very least, big sister. But nope, little sister, apparently. Yeah, I don't know. Then there is also unexpected romance, to be honest. I honestly didn't expect it at the very least. Starting off with the camping trip. With a confession there and kiss. It's like, uh, wait, what? There's supposed to be... There's actual progression when it comes to romance coming out of absolutely nowhere. Uh, what? There's also kind of a bit of romance going on between some of the side characters, I think. Between Ishikawa and Sato, which are both childhood friends. Yeah, I don't know. I honestly did not expect them to be childhood friends. But they are, and I can kind of see... Kind of romance building up between them. Yeah, so I guess maybe childhood friends will actually win for once. Maybe. Who knows? And overall, one of the things throughout the anime that I actually kind of liked that I honestly didn't expect was... Doboru Sensei. The teacher constantly getting noble nosebleeds from seeing Raido and Aharen doing things together. I honestly did not expect to enjoy her very much, but I did. So, yeah. And another thing with this anime is it kind of definitely dates itself when this whole thing, when the, all this is written, considering uh, fidget spinners, Pokemon Go, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, yeah. It dated itself a bit with that stuff. But I don't really have anything else to say there. Decent kind of comedy slice of life thing, I guess. But moving on to Shrapton Editing Sim. In which 
out of all the anime this season, I this one that I kind of enjoyed the most, which I wasn't expecting at all, to be honest. And overall, out of all the anime this season, is also the one that I kind of want to see a second season of the most as well. Though there are people that complain about its art style not being completely um, faithful to the manga, I guess it's adapted off of. Don't actually know. Is it manga or light novels that it's adapted from? I don't know. But uh, yeah, people don't really like the art style there as much. Doesn't really bother me personally. But yeah. The prince and his friends are all completely fucking stupid. Especially with what was going on there at the end, after they see what Leon is capable of, and they still, for some reason, actually think they stand any kind of chance of ever, ever, ever beating him. Yeah, they are stupid, but at the very least, they do actually get some character development. At least three of them, I guess, considering they didn't have time for two of them. If they get a second season, I'm guessing it's going to be there. But overall, Leon, I think, kind of carries the anime a bit. Just because of how he is and everything. But at the end there, I, one thing I definitely liked when it comes to him is the fact that he did actually finally kind of accept how things are in this world. And that it's not exactly the game that he knows. Yeah. Though he deals does still consider himself a mob character. Despite the fact that he's not really much of a mob character anymore. Yeah, and he hasn't been one for quite a while. But I don't actually really have anything else to say here. Definitely want to see more of it. But yeah, don't know if it's going to get a second seed or not. Hopefully it does. But yeah, moving on to I'm Quitting Kiroink. Yeah, ended basically how I expected it to, to be honest. And overall, the anime was decent. That's all, really. You know, when it comes to the story, yeah, no, it's that great. I personally enjoyed the characters more than the story itself. And the characters weren't that great either, to be honest. So, yeah... I honestly don't have anything else to say about that. It was decent. So, moving on to Tomodachi Game. Which, first two games in it, I honestly didn't really enjoy it very much. And I think that's kind of due to Tenji, for the most part. But once we got to the third game, I definitely started enjoying things more, considering Tenichi was actually being honest, and also Yuichi showing him his true self, basically. So, uh, yeah. Another reason I guess they kind of started enjoying things once we got to Game 3 is the fact that I could actually tell what was going on. Considering the first two games, it's like, what in the world is actually going on here? I don't understand all the tricks being used here. I can't see through them. To me, it's to me it kind of seemed like completely bullshit excuses that Atwer were intentionally put there using loopholes that were intentionally put there. Yeah, the third game I started of actually seeing through things quite easily, like the one manage character management Maria being there. Notice that instantly. And also how the third game worked uh, overall. I saw through that pretty easily. Can't bring Vu back to the hider bear without being followed. Yeah. So, yeah, I honestly don't actually say have much else to say there. It's an anime that I could definitely see as uh, like a second season for, but eh, I don't really care that much about it because I never really got too invested in the story, I think. Probably due to the fact that the first half of the anime I didn't really enjoy very much. Yeah. So, 
move on to the greatest demon lord reborn as a typical nobody which i honestly don't know how to shorten that title to be honest which three swine just said the entire thing so yeah it was not very good at all but it was enjoyable at the very least which to be honest is kind of what's the most important thing i think it was at the very least enjoyable but not very good yeah most interesting thing about it, to be honest, was just the fact that this is the char main character there was reborn and some of the char people around him in his previous life are actually still alive. One of which being the teacher there, kind of trying to actually prove that it is him, considering she has suspicions of it, but just needs confirmation. But yeah, that was one of the more interesting things in it at the very least but overall still not very good so i guess i'll move on to rpg real estate yeah good slice of life anime where would the main care one of the main characters die at the end wait what that's not supposed to happen <laughs> nothing's supposed to happen in slice of life anime Everyone says that nothing ha happens in a slice of life anime. The main character's not supposed to die. But then again, Kotone does get brought back to life by a necromancer. With the help of a necromancer that they helped out earlier in this show, anime the air. So yeah, Kotone comes back to life there. So, yeah. Definitely, overall, this anime is one of the best slice of life anime i've seen in quite a while i think i think there's a possibility that it will actually get second season i personally think there is at least but yeah slice of life anime which more of a story than most of them kind of considering well main character does die yeah Still a slice of life, though. That was good. But, uh, yeah, don't really have anything else there. Say so, moving on to Miss Sachiku San and the Little Baby Ghost. Which also has a shortened title that I don't actually remember right now on the top of my head. So, yeah, guess I don't remember that. So, um, it's another good slice of life in which one of the characters that you kind of see in the opening and everything Miko only actually shows up in the last two episodes so yeah and if you were to actually compare this anime to anything it would be Sinko-san I think so yeah Overall, pretty good. And honestly, would also like to see more of this as well. And yeah. Just too fucking cute, I tell ya. It's seriously too cute. But uh, yeah, nothing else to say there. So moving on to Heroin Tarumono. In which I honestly don't know the exact title of the anime in English. So I'm just going off the Japanese parts that... Uh, at the beginning there so yeah it was good anime I'll say that much though it wasn't exactly for me which I kind of make guess makes sense because I'm pretty sure I'm not exactly a part of the targeted demographic for the anime but I did enjoy it at the very least and personally I would have liked it if I Anime actually focused more on Hiyori instead of the whole idol stuff going on in it. But, uh, yeah, I understand what the anime is and everything, so it makes sense. That I was focusing more on the idols considering what the story of it and the whole world it's in it is based off of and everything there. But yeah, don't exactly have much to say there, and as you can kind of tell, I'm kind of not 
talking as much about anime here, considering, yeah, I don't have very much when it comes to notes, considering I write notes down for all this stuff, so I remember everything. Later into the week, here I kind of wrote less and less, because I was just getting tired of it, so, yeah. Moving on to the final anime I actually have to talk about right now, which is Skeleton Knight. And, yeah. This anime wasn't great. There's a few anime like that this season, to be honest. Not as being very great, but at the very least enjoyable. So, yeah. The villains in this anime may as well all been the same. To be honest. Not much difference between them all. And I honestly don't have that much else to say here. Really. It just wasn't that great, but it was enjoyable. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I like the characters more than anything else, I think. And the story itself. But, uh, yeah. That's anime done, I guess. So, that's 10 anime that's into this week, though I guess it's a lot of considering comedy sign, but I'm kind of pushing that off until next week, considering I still haven't watched episode 12 yet, so yeah. I should have 10 th an anime to talk about next week as well. So, yeah. I guess I'll move on to talking about Devious World now. So, yeah. Version 73. Finally going over all the stuff that was out of here. And which, yeah, this actually kind of took me the entire week to actually go through. Which just goes to show how much it's actually added compared to normal, considering normally, well, last few updates, I've been able to do everything in just a single day. This took me an entire week to go through. But I guess that may have also been to the fact that I was a bit more busy than I normally am. I guess, kind of. But yeah, starting from the top here, with the lewd smartphone thing there, in which it kind of just is what the option actually says it is there, so yeah. A spin shop thing or whatever. Um, just continuing a bit of the story there with something to do with Jamie hypnotizing Maya. Not that much there, I think, if I remember correctly. Really isn't very much added there, but it continues that stuff there with one choice. So. Eric and the Wimpy Tarana option there, that was added, well, it kind of explains itself in the update notes there. Don't need to say anything else. So, um, next thing, which, next two things, considering the first one is just that the advanced programming techniques was re removed and is also now been replaced by Fate Loot Order. But going back to the advanced programming techniques things there, there was actually a bit of stuff there that was, and that thing that was removed there. And to be honest, I kind of would like to see that continued, but hey, it's been removed now, I guess. So, yeah, and I'm pretty sure it's been a while since that was ever actually added as well. So, yeah, it wasn't going, away, going anywhere, I think. And probably would have been a bit hard to actually continue any kind of story there, which is probably why it was removed. But yeah, Fate to Loot Order. Which I'm guessing the intro to this whole thing here was is kind of based off of FGO. With the whole story there at the beginning, I think. Considering I haven't actually played FGO myself, so I don't really know what it's like. But I'm guessing it's based off of that. But overall, you can summon a servant. Choose between any class at all, which the only one that's actually currently available is Ryder, in which you, of course, get Alstalfo. Yeah. And then, at that point, you merge Alstalfo with his steed. Yeah. It's a bit weird. Uh, but overall, when it comes to this whole Fate's Loot Order thing, it definitely has potential, that's for sure. Especially considering how the whole Fate series itself started off. So, yeah. Definitely has potential, this whole thing here. Though, this whole Ostafo thing going on that's currently written is a bit 
bit uh, weird, to say the least. Then, next thing here is Inky Jamie clothes shopping thing there, in which, yeah, not much there. And, oh, I actually remember where this whole thing is at in the story. It has to do with Jamie's birthday, basically, in which she becomes an incubus, basically. And at this point in the story, you kind of change them to a girl form. And yeah, doing shopping with Maya and Keva. So yeah, not much that was actually added there, to be honest. Um, moving on to the next choice there, which is the Farmster Girl Worlds thing. For Jamie, in which you kind of got some kind of advanced VR headset or something beforehand. In which you go into this game that was pre-installed and everything. And yeah, what's added here is for if you actually leave that game, you then kind of get few choices, which the only things currently written leads you to Skyrim. Yeah, and there is actually a bit there that's currently written at the very least. I honestly haven't played Skyrim myself, and also haven't really seen anyone play Skyrim, but I know the memes at the beginning of it at the very least, so eh. I honestly don't know much about it, Skyrim, to be honest. Just memes and all that stuff, I guess. But uh, next thing that was added with Gwyn. The only thing when it's gotten this entire update, it can literally just be summed up as more bimboy gay stuff. Yeah. Not exactly the kind of thing I enjoy. So, yeah. Not going to talk about that anymore. Next thing is Cyan waking up Bang. Ludely. And, uh, the only other thing I'll say here about this is that Bang is a dog. Yeah. It took me a while before I actually remembered where exactly in the story where in this game that whole thing there was with Bellwether. Yeah, I completely forgot about where that was. Kind of probably due to the fact I didn't exactly really enjoy reading all that. Kind of pushed it out of my mind a bit. But yeah, it's library, game novels, monk, I think is the line of choices there. Let's get to this whole thing. So, next thing here, Blessed Buddy. Seeing how far I can go with Ayako and Laura. Which, both Ayako and Laura are lesbians. And also this thing is kind of bit similar to the previous one. Considering, uh, yeah. Two dogs. Yeah, I think the developer here kind of had something going on at this time, considering I'm pretty sure all this stuff is written in order that was written. Yeah. Next thing here. It's kind of one of the more entertaining things, I think. That was an added here. Cyan Dabbing the Diablo, which is a gaming computer with a sex double core CPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and six overclocked full cooling fans. Yeah! Sex 66. Kind of says something there. Also, with this computer here, a top of the line VR headset gets tossed in for absolutely free! In which the only thing that really gets used here, kind of, considering the only thing that you can actually do with what's written currently there is play a game that seems like some kind of parody of Corruption of Champions, which the name of it's in this devious world here is literally just switched around Champions of Corruption. Yeah, I've honestly never heard of that game before, but um. Looking at things there, it seems similar to something I've played before, I think. But, eh, yeah, whatever. Also, apparently that game is getting some kind of sequel, considering it's on Steam. It's Champion... Corruption of Champions 2. Yeah. Whatever, I guess. Next thing, Sa... Which is more of Cyan and her uncle. Yeah. Explained itself there. 
Aha. And then more stuff with Cyan getting a motorcycle, which is kind of the same area as the uncle thing. Just a single choice separating these two routes here. But yeah, trying to fix that motorcycle. Not much was really written here. And yeah, due to the fact that not much was actually written here, I don't even under, really understand what's actually going on here. And so he pulled out, try, tried to pull something else there, and I'm guessing it's kind of some chipboard or something, and it's kind of fused with your body or something, and you, without you realizing. Yeah, I'm guessing that's kind of what happens there, so yeah. I honestly really don't understand what's going on there personally, but yeah. Hopefully more gets rid so I can actually understand it. But moving on to the next thing, which is Eric and Ray. And yeah, it took me a little bit to actually remember this thing, considering it's been a while since I read that whole thing going on there. In which, this is once again more femboy stuff. But instead, Ed, this is Futa. Because Ray is a Futa there. So, eh. I guess it's slightly better than the stuff with Gwyn, I guess. I still don't really enjoy the femboy stuff. So, next thing here is Austin hanging out on the first floor at this party. In which, the stuff written here, go to the party, you end up winning a game console at a raffle at that party. In which, has a game on it. Don't actually know if this is actually some kind of parody or not, if we're just completely original. Dragon Daniel Lords, or how are you actually say that? If it is a parody, I'm kind of guessing it's a parody of some kind of game like Final Fantasy. I'm not exactly sure. It might be. I'm not. I'm not sure there. But yeah, you get sucked into the game basically with the three girls at Hatasuneko. And also this whole thing when it comes to Hatsuneko there. I really want to see more, but yeah, this is the first update in quite a while, I think, it's gotten. So, eh. It gets sucked into the game there, in which... When it comes to everything going on there, which is just a single page at that point when she gets sucked in, I think. Um, Suzue is definitely a weeb, that is for sure. The fact that she wanted to be prepared for getting sucked into a game like this, though she wasn't, is kind of going. So yeah, she wasn't prepared for it, though she wanted to be for something like this. And also the fact, uh, it's another thing there, in which you have a command skill, which apparently is a hair master power, as it says, I guess. Yeah, I think this thing is going to be interesting once it's continued. Huh. There are literally only two choices at that point. One basically just saying that you're not going to use, and the other go is where you kind of go crazy with power, I guess. Yeah. But neither option of certain yet. So, um, next thing here. Training suit and bots thing added to the Ranma sim for Eric there. In which, yeah, those two options kind of explain themselves. You can pause the video if you actually want to read them. I guess if you already haven't read them already. So, yeah. Um, Jamie and Gideon. You tell Gideon that you're not interested in being with another guy, as it says there. But yeah, with what's written there, you end up kind of catching him with your dad later. Yeah. Moving on. Cyan with her last thing here, with a dare with her mom, I guess. In which, yeah, time with your mother. With using little daddy as a strap on. Ah, uh, yeah, I think you can figure out that stuff in your own there. So, final thing here, which, yeah, this is easily the largest thing that was added in this update. 
Jamie in this jewelry box with a key in it, in which the jewelry box itself is full of keys, which can be used on any lock. Like, for an example, with stuff that's there, you use a key on like a toolbox, you open it up, maybe like there's a knife inside the box all of a sudden. So yeah, use it on a door, go into another dimension, ba go into another dimension or something basically. In which, uh, yeah, kind of going to treat this thing like anything else in the game. And not just like I normally do with stuff that's added in the updates, considering that's how much stuff was actually added to this. So, Tiger Key there. Basically brings you to a furry version of the world. Yeah. In which you end up kind of countering your furry version. A furry version of yourself, and yeah, things happen. Oh, that's all I'll say there. And then there is the high tech key, in which you use it on the closet door, bring, and they'll bring you onto a spaceship that is in currently in the middle of a battle. And also, basically, I guess everyone. And on that ship are monster girls, furries, I don't know, actually know exactly which they are, or which way they lean more. Are they more furry or are they more monster girl? I'm not exactly sure. And why is my camera not focusing right now? There you go. Okay. So, use the high-tech key on the toolbox, and you get a mini digitizer, which works quite similarly to the digitizer at World's Land and Eric stuff. Basically, in which it can turn anything or anyone into data in which you can then do anything to them. And first you end up having it where you test it on tablets, which is not exactly Smart, I'd think, using on tablets like that instead of just some random thing that doesn't really matter very much. But yeah, you end up upgrading the tablet to some kind of futuristic model of it, apparently, because it can update things that don't actually exist yet. And then you go on to invite Maya over to test uh, test the it on her, in which, which she very happily agrees to. Considering that's just how much she loves him, despite him being completely dense to that fact. Even after everything that's going on there from that point on, he's still completely dense to it. She'll literally do anything for him. Which has kind of been shown off quite a bit in other stuff written for Jamie when it comes to Maya. Yeah. And overall, I think the high-tech key thing here probably ha by itself actually has more content in it than anything else in the updates. Come on. Be honest. High-tech key alone in this thing that I said, the jewelry box here, is more content than anything else in the update. Yeah. But that's there is the end of all that stuff that was there. So, maybe another week or two until the no next update, I think. Not exactly sure. But hopefully I can get myself to keep going like I've been for the last few weeks now. And start working on the next character. Running through the next character here. And get through all their content and just keep that up for the final four characters that I have not gone on over done yet and then just basically have devious world finished and the only thing i'll ever actually need to do again for this thing is look through everything that's added in these updates which would be very nice considering at that point yeah done with devious world though there's devious mundanity to do that words well uh, that's going to take a while to do if i go to whenever i go to it but yeah Devious World, done. And, yeah. I honestly don't actually have anything else to say here. This stream Nino Kuni again this week. I'm pretty sure I 
kind of finished Cloud Coil Canyon area. If there's anything left, it's barely anything there. So yeah, currently just farming soul stones basically, trying to get all that stuff done before I continue on again. And go into Winter Wonderland, I think it was. But yeah, I guess I don't really have anything else to say here. Video, I've been recording for 40 minutes already, so definitely need to end this, because it's going to take a bit longer to edit than normal. For sure. So, yeah. I guess you, that is the end of this now. So I hope you all enjoyed this video, and hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye. Uh,